Proverbs chapter 29. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with the thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing, and bewrayeth it not. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. Opening Sentence Proverbs 29 verse 1 He, that being often reproved hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Reproof is meted out upon lawbreakers by those in authority in an attempt to reform them. Lawbreakers may resist the attempts at reformation, but they will not be able to resist the consequences of their continuous disobedience. Righteous Authority Proverbs 29 verse 2 When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Finding the theme, rulers judge the unjust. The theme of this chapter is soon discovered by noting certain words used throughout, reproved, authority, rule, judgment, considereth, seek, meet, judge, reproof, and correct. God chastised the wicked in hopes that he would forsake his wickedness. A man who refused to be corrected would harden his heart against God. With each chastisement meted out, the wicked would grow more rebellious against him until God was compelled to destroy him. God established governmental authority in the earth for the purpose of keeping sin in check, but because of the sinful nature of man, wickedness only increased as time passed. A righteous ruler had authority from God to mete out punishment upon the wicked. 
When the king executed righteous judgment, the nation was spared from God's punishment. The nation of Israel played out this theme repeatedly throughout the Old Testament in cycles of rebellion, punishment, repentance, and back to rebellion. The Pharaoh of Egypt is an example of a ruler of a Gentile nation being repeatedly reproved in a series of physical chastisements upon his nation and their gods. Pharaoh's heart grew harder with each undeniable proof of the supremacy of the authority of the one true God. Wisdom or Pleasure Proverbs 29 verse 3 Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. To love wisdom means to choose wisdom. Wisdom is the word of God and false doctrine is its counterfeit. Jesus gave an example of this in his account of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, in which the son chose to pursue the pleasures of the world instead of serving his father. Fortunately, the son repented and returned to his father's house. Establish or overthrow. Proverbs 29 verse, For the king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. The righteous judgment and use of authority by the king strengthened the whole kingdom. But a king who took bribes and perverted justice would bring the kingdom to ruin. Isaiah 33 verses 15 to 16, He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that disposeth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks, bread shall be given him, his waters shall be sure. Snares Proverbs 29 verses 5 to 6 A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. The nation of Israel had been repeatedly caught in the snares of their neighbor's false gods. The nations used flattering words and the promise of riches to set the trap. Daniel warned the nation of Israel against the coming Antichrist who would take their kingdom by flatteries. Exodus 34 verse 12, Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Daniel 11 verse 21, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Consider the poor. Proverbs 29 verse 7, The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. A righteous ruler will not respect persons in judgment. He will not neglect the cases of the poor, nor will he take bribes from the wealthy. Exodus 23 verse 6, Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. Leviticus 19 verse 15, Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Scornful versus wise. Proverbs 29 verse 8, Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. This proverb confirms, once again, how the spiritual condition of the ruler of Israel could affect the state of the entire nation. A king who despised and disobeyed God's law brought God's judgment upon the city, but a king who governed with God's wisdom turned away God's wrath. The wise versus the foolish. Proverbs 29 verse 9, If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. In Israel's history, God instructed the rulers of the nation to contend with certain nations at certain times, but he also instructed them to leave off contending at other times. It was important for Israel's rulers to contending with a fool because nothing good can come from it. The upright versus the bloodthirsty. Proverbs 29 verse 10, the bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Bloodthirsty men among the nation of Israel sought to kill, steal, and destroy the lives of their own brethren. A ruler who heard a court case would discern between the righteous and the wicked. A righteous ruler would always seek to save the victims of violence. Proverbs 12 verse 6, The words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. 
Micah 7 verse 2, the good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. The wise versus the fool. Proverbs 29 verse 11, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it until afterwards. A fool is known for being hasty with his words. A righteous ruler will hear a court case and afterwards, when he has heard the entirety of the matter, will render a judgment. Proverbs 28 verse 23, he that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with a tongue. A wicked versus a faithful ruler. Proverbs 29 verses 12 to 14, if a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful man meet together, the Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. A ruler who will accept false testimony will surround himself with men who do the same. To meet together refers to a court case. This particular case involves a disagreement between the righteous per versus a liar. The standard of judgment in every case is God's word, which will give light to the judge. God will bless the king that judges the poor without partiality. The rod and reproof. Proverbs 29 verse 15, the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. The ruler of the nation had authority from God to mete out the rod, physical punishment, and reproof, verbal correction, upon those who were brought to him for judgment. However, the use of the rod and reproof should begin at home with very young children under their mother's authority. The wisdom of the word of God instructs mothers to first mete out the rod, which should then be followed by reproof. Mothers who fail to do this will be shamed by the bad behavior of their children. Their undisciplined children often end up in a court of law when they are grown. Transgressors fall. Proverbs 29 verse 16, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Wicked judges, rulers, and kings led to an increase in the sins of a nation. This vexed the souls of righteous men who suffered under their evil leadership and society. However, God promised that the righteous would see their fall. Ezekiel 9 verses 4 to 6, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh, and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. 2 Peter 2 verse 8, For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Correct thy son. Proverbs 29 verse 17, Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yeah, he shall give delight unto thy soul. When those in authority correct their subjects and when a subordinate receives correction, it causes both to experience rest. God corrected his son, which is the nation of Israel and its king. When they received his chastening, this gave delight to God. Proverbs 3 verses 11 to 12, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. No vision for the rulers. Proverbs 29 verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. During the latter courses of God's punishment upon Israel, Leviticus 26, he turned his face away from his people and stopped speaking to them. Previously, God spoke to the nation of Israel through visions shown to their prophets. There was no vision when God stopped speaking to his people. Isaiah 1 verse 1, the vision of Isaiah the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. 
Lamentations 2 verse 9 her, Jerusalem's gates are sunk into the ground. He hath destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. During these times of God's silence, the people of Israel needed to continue keeping the law. Resistance to Correction Proverbs 29 verse 19 A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Reproof alone, verbal correction, is often not enough to curb sinful behavior. The rod must also be administered. However, even the rod is useless against a foolish son. Proverbs 27 verse 22, Though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. Hasty judgment. Proverbs 29 verse 20, Sayest thou man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. This harkens back to the fool in verse 11, who spoke whatever came into his mind. The book of Ecclesiastes also issues a warning against being hasty with words, Ecclesiastes 5 verse 2 Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Bring up a servant. Proverbs 29 verse 21 He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. This type of adoption is a legal and binding agreement in a court of law. In the Bible and Jewish culture, a natural-born son had to be legally declared the firstborn son in order to inherit from the father. This was not necessarily the first male child to be born into the family. It could be any son of the father's choosing or even a beloved servant. Furious Pride Proverbs 29 verses 22 to 23 An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. In context, this is referring to an angry and furious ruler of the people. His anger was a result of his sin and pride. Such a king would attempt to rule the people with his uncontrollable temper and intimidation. In contrast, humble kings like David and Jesus would rule with gentleness and ease. Matthew 11, verse 30. Psalm 18, verse 35, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. A thief's partner. Proverbs 29, verse 24, Whoso is partner with a thief hadeth his own soul, he heareth cursing, and bereath it not. In the law of Moses, if a man heard blasphemy and did not reveal it, he would receive the same punishment as if he committed the crime. Blasphemy is saying something in God's name or attributing words or events to God when he did not say or do it, which is called cursing. Leviticus 5 verse 1, And if a soul sin, and hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness, whether he hath seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Leviticus 24 verse 11, And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. And they brought him unto Moses, and his mother's name was Shelemith, the daughter of Dibri of the tribe of Dan. Fear of man. Proverbs 29 verse 25, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. In the context of righteous authority, God is the only one to be feared and trusted. Wicked rulers might abuse their authority and cause their subjects to disobey God. A faithful man must be willing to suffer the consequence of disobeying a wicked ruler and obey God instead. Daniel and Joseph are examples of men who feared the Lord more than man. Psalm 56 verses 3 to 4 What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word, in God I have put my trust, I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Matthew 10 verse 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Conclusion, the unjust versus the upright ruler. 
Proverbs 29 verses 26 to 27, many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. In court cases, each party desires the ruler's favor, Proverbs 19 verse 6, but true and righteous judgment will be based solely on the word of God. An unjust ruler is disgusting to the victim of his perverted judgment and to God. A righteous judge is disgusting to those who hope to get away with their evil deeds. Earthly judges often pervert justice, but ultimately God will judge every person with righteous judgment. Summary The creator of heaven and earth has authority over his creation. God established governing bodies in both heaven and earth. Thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers execute and enforce authority, but because of sin, those governments became corrupted. However, God teaches mankind and angels to obey those in authority, even the wicked ones, unless their authority violates God's word. Men should willing to suffer at the hands of wicked rulers when they choose to obey God. The rulers of kingdoms and nations greatly influence the spiritual state of its citizens, yet that does not excuse disobedience. Every individual is responsible to know and to obey God's word in every situation. Dispensational Consideration Most of the principles taught in this chapter are cross-dispensational and may be applied to a believer's life today, with two exceptions. One, there are no prophets in the dispensation of grace and no religious leaders who receive visions from God now that the Bible is complete. The Apostle Paul was the last person to see visions from the Lord. Two, it is not possible for a saved person to blaspheme God. Jesus Christ's death on the cross was the all-sufficient payment for all the sins that mankind committed, past, present, and future. Those who have trusted in his payment are saved, sealed with the Holy Spirit, and can never be separated from the body of Christ into which they are a permanent member. Life Application General principles from this chapter ought to be applied to the believer's life and walk. Accept the correction from the word of God and do not be hardened against it. It is pleasing to God when a believer chooses to grow in wisdom by reading and studying the Bible and by seeking to understand his word rightly divided. Righteous men will be considerate of the state of the poor among them and act accordingly. It is foolish to speak hastily without first considering all the facts of a case. The rod and reproof give wisdom to children, and when correctly applied, it will help them walk pleasing to their parents and to God. End of section three. Chapter 30 begins section four, Proverbs 30 to 31. Proverbs 30 verse one, the words of Aga the son of Jacob, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Yukul. Proverbs chapter 29, homework. Concordance search, the phrase without remedy occurs two times in the Bible and both are found in Proverbs. Read both references in context, particularly chapter six, which highlights very particular wicked behaviors of such a person. These wicked men will not be corrected by God's word and therefore must be destroyed. Also read 2 Chronicles 36 verses 14 to 21. Loving wisdom versus keeping company with harlots, Proverbs 29. Three presents a contrast between loving wisdom and keeping company with harlots, which is a sub-theme found throughout the book of Proverbs and the entire Bible. As a nation, Israel was given God's wisdom, but they forsook it and joined with the surrounding nations in worshiping Satan and his fallen angels or false gods. The Apostle Paul speaks of individuals who join themselves with a harlot and sin against the body of Christ. Read 1 Corinthians 6, which is about saved people who are warned against literal fornication as well as other sins that associate the members of the body of Christ with deeds that are unfit for a believer. Believers need to learn and be strengthened by Paul's doctrine and choose God's wisdom over the sins of the flesh. Notice, chapter 29 of Proverbs mentions three types of snares and one net. Verse five, a man that flatters. Verse six, 
the transgression of an evil man. Verse 8, scornful men. Verse 25, the fear of man. If you have time, find the word snare, snares, and snared in a King James Bible. They are found in 67 verses. It is beneficial to understand the types of snares found throughout the Bible. A study of snares helps us better understand the history of Israel and their weaknesses. It helps us understand how Satan works to trap men and nations in sins. And it helps us be able to recognize and avoid the snares Satan might use against us today. Concordance search, all forms of the word contend, including contended, contendest, contendeth, and contending, are found 24 times in a King James Bible. As you read through the search results, you will notice that Israel was instructed to contend with some of the neighboring nations, but to leave off contending with others. The following are other references of note. Nehemiah contended with the rulers and nobles of Judah. God promised to contend with anyone who contends against the nation of Israel, and Michael the archangel contended with the devil. The Apostle Paul preached the word with much contention to the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 2, but he instructed Titus to avoid contention. Titus 3 verse 9. This helps believers understand that it is essential to know the will of God and to be a mature believer so that we will know when to contend and when to avoid contention. Define, find the word delicate in a King James Bible, read through each reference to develop a biblical definition of the word. Make a list of words that are found associated with the word delicate in your notes. Look up the word delicate in Webster's 1828 dictionary to discover if the definitions agree. Consider, the following verses are a few examples of someone other than the firstborn male in the family receiving the blessing or the inheritance. Genesis 25 verses 1 to 6, Abraham had eight sons, Ishmael was his firstborn, but Isaac received the inheritance. Genesis 25 verse 23 and Exodus 4 verse 22, Jacob, the son of Isaac, is chosen over his older brother Esau, and his name is changed to Israel. The nation of Israel is called God's firstborn son. Genesis 48 verses 8 to 20 and Jeremiah 31 verse 9, Ephraim, the younger, is substituted for Manasseh, the elder. Genesis 49 verses 3 to 4 and 1 Chronicles 5 verse 1, Reuben, the firstborn male of Jacob, lost the inheritance of the firstborn because of his sin. 1 Chronicles 5 verse 2 and Psalm 89 verses 20 to 27, Judah, the fourthborn son of Jacob, prevails over his brethren. King David of the tribe of Judah is called God's firstborn. Jesus is the promised seed of the tribe of Judah through David. Define, find Berei and Bereath in a King James Bible. Read through the references to discover its biblical definition. Compare your findings with the definition given in a Webster's 1828 dictionary. Consider, the following is a complete list of the visions that God gave to Paul as he was revealing new doctrine to him. Acts 9 verse 12, 16 verse 10, 18 verse 9, 22 colon 17 dash 21, 26 colon 19, and 2 Corinthians 12 verse 1. Also consider that Paul claimed to be the last person to see Christ in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 8. The books of the Bible are not in chronological order, but in dispensational order. Although the books of Hebrews through Revelation follow after Paul's letters of Romans through Philemon, they were written before Paul's letters were completed. Paul's second letter to Timothy is the last book of the Bible written. This is why Paul could say in 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 to 17, all scripture is given, that the man of God may be perfect. Paul fulfilled the word of God, Colossians 1. 25, and in the Holy Bible, we have all that we need to be made perfect in Christ. 